Hey guys, um, did you guys know that um, a lot of African Americans don't have a passport? Another reason why we don't come to Africa. No, it's because we don't go anywhere. In case you haven't been to my channel, um, our channel, Buckner Family Travels. My name is Darren, and Buckner Family Travels is a channel that talks about traveling mainly to Africa. We are black Americans, um, and it's my son. Um, he's 12 years old, and my wife. I have two other daughters who are grown, so probably won't be traveling with us too much. Do a lot of traveling on their own. And we have two dogs, and we are on our way to South Africa. That's our goal. But in this video, we're gonna talk about why don't we have passports? Hmm. That's, um, I mean, it's a difficult question, but a lot of people have asked me in comments and whatnot on different um, pages and Facebook pages and just people in general that find out I travel a lot and my family travels. They're like, man, I don't even know what to do to get a passport. I don't even know um, what I'm supposed to do. They'll just let me go to another country and it won't be a problem. Well, of course there are gonna be times where you can't get a passport um, you can find out some of those reasons um, and go to, I think it's the U.S. Department of State. I'll make sure I put the link in the bottom below um, as to those um, reasons why you won't be able to get a passport. Uh, one of the big ones I heard they take your passport for in America is child support. Um, I think if you have too much IRS debt, um, unpaid or unresolved, don't have payment arrangements, whatever the case, I think that's another reason. And who knows what else other reasons they have behind it. But I'm here to talk about why African Americans need to get a passport. Uh, I'm going to be looking over my notes here because I didn't want to miss anything. And I think it's important um, that we are thorough and we give you the facts. Um, I'll give my opinion. And I know everyone in the comments is going to give their opinions as to why and what we should be doing and what'll be better, whether you are in Africa or whether you're here in the United States um, or Europe. I know you're gonna give your opinions and that's fine. We want you to have your opinions. We just want everybody to keep it respectful. We know everyone's not gonna agree. You're not gonna agree with me. You're not gonna agree with other people. You're not gonna agree with some of the people on other channels and that's fine. That's okay, but as a people, this is us talking and we wanna make sure we stay respectful to each other, okay? Okay. First of all, let's talk about population. The population in the United States for people that identify as African American or Black American is around 47 million, okay? Now, I think the population in the United States is somewhere around 350 million people. So we make up about 47 million, which I think that takes us to about 13% of the population. Um, now, in the United States, only about 35 to 40 percent of people even have a passport now i want you to think about that number for a minute only 35 to 40 percent even have a passport and to think that we are about 13 maybe 14 percent of the population that tells me that that number is extremely low for african americans well this is why we need to do better let's just keep it simple first of all it's one of the best forms of ID. You guys know what's been going on in the United States. And for you folks in my South African family, my Kenyan family, my Ghanaian family, and um, Zimbabwe and all those other countries um, in the motherland, um, they've been coming up with a lot of laws for um, being able to vote in the United States. And a lot of them had to do with ID. Uh, I personally don't see why it's difficult to obtain ID. I think we should all be going out and making sure we have ID. It is just a safe thing to do, especially if you're African American in the United States of America. You should have some ID. And it gives you the freedom to move around, drive, all that kind of good stuff. And if you do get pulled over, at least if someone says, hey, you fit the description, at least you have ID on you. So it just makes sense. So it's one of the best forms of ID. Another one, in case you didn't know, the United States has one of the strongest passports in the entire world. 
we have access to, I think it's between 185 to 187 countries. It's somewhere, it's a high number, close to, close to 200 countries around the world that we can visit with our passport. Uh, that's important because it gives us access to the world. It gives you the ability to get up and go. That's another reason. Yeah, um, let's just say, you know, things just got real ugly here for you, the family, and you just didn't want to do it anymore. You wanted to find a place where you can go, where you can live a more peaceful life, um, where you could uh, retire, um, where you could just even just go on vacation. I mean, you need a passport for that kind of stuff. You want to be able to just buy your ticket, know you got your passport inside your safe or wherever you keep it at, and buy that ticket with confidence, knowing that, hey, Let's go. You might just see a great deal on some of the websites that are out here. Uh, be able to get a ticket and get it cheap and do a round trip um, ticket to go someplace. Um, I suggest going to Africa because if you're going to spend the money. You might as well go there. Another reason why it gives you real firsthand experience of the continent. I, again, I keep talking about the continent. I know there are a lot of people who talk about going to visit Europe and they want to go see the Eiffel Towers and all that kind of good stuff. I'm not really for that. I've been to Europe and it's, you know, it's okay. But if I'm going to go someplace and spend my money, I'm going to go spend it on people that look like me. And I'm going to be surrounded by people that look like me because, hey, it's just very comfortable. Okay. Another reason why is because it'll allow you to explore business opportunities. Yeah. That's what I said, business opportunities. You guys know that my wife and I are entrepreneurs and we work for ourselves and it gives us the opportunity to explore and see different opportunities around the world. Um, maybe just not on the continent, but all over the world, but especially the continent. It gives us the opportunity to see opportunities and see ideas, gain knowledge, and we get the firsthand account of this um, experience and these experiences and gaining knowledge and um, seeing different things that we might want to get into. I know there are some people that go to Rwanda and they end up importing coffee. They have their own brands now selling coffee or teas. Uh, some people are importing shea butter from West Africa. Some people are importing um, cocoa products. I mean, I mean, it just makes sense. I mean, you know, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, why, you know, in this so-called global economy, why limit to yourself to just the United States and why not just go work someplace where it's going to be easy to do business? Uh, maybe not as much red tape. In some countries, yeah, sure, it's going to be a lot of red tape, and you're going to have to team up with some, some local folks, but you'll also be helping the economy for your family and other people's families. So um, that's another reason why. Um, I think one of the biggest things we have to know, you guys, is that I, I read a stat in 2019, African-Americans, people that identify as african American spent over $109 billion, $109 billion U.S. dollars, black people. I ain't talking about them other folks, just black people. We spent that on leisure travel. Now, if I had to guess, most of that is not in Africa. There's a lot of reasons behind that. Of course, the negativity. We're always told that they live in huts and the animals are going to get you. And, oh, they're always at war, conflict. You're going to get killed. You're going to get the, the Ebola. You All this stuff they come up with as to why you shouldn't travel. Um, oh, they're going to have the highest COVID. That's what they were telling us in the U.S. for people in um, Africa. Oh, those countries over there, they're going to be devastated. They're going to be wiped out. Well, we all know that the U.S. actually had, unfortunately, more deaths than anyone else in the world. Now, I hope I don't get censored for that by YouTube. I'm just stating a fact. So we'll see how this turns out. But um, with that kind of money spending overseas, we should spend it with our own people. Um, let's spend it with our own people. Um, you don't have to. I'm not saying you have to live there because it's not for everybody to live there. But why not go when you're going to go on vacation? Take your family someplace where they feel comfortable and they feel safe. Because that's the part I really wanted to get to. Um, now, these are stats coming from the U.S. Department of State, and I looked up some things, and I wanted to see just how many people have gotten hurt when they're overseas. And when I say hurt, I'm talking homicide. How many people have been killed in Africa? I went the whole continent. I went state by state because these stats are kept. Now, there may be somebody who has uh, 
firsthand accountability, firsthand accounts, I'm sorry, not accountability, but firsthand accounts of something that may have happened to a family member or somebody they know from America. But this is what I found according to the Department of State. Let me just put it like this. You're much safer on the continent of Africa. Yeah, folks, I said it. And this is not something I'm just saying based on my experience with my family. Although we had nothing but great experiences, whether it was in Uganda, Kenya, Zanzibar, Tanzania, South Africa, it didn't matter. Wherever we went, we felt safe. But the numbers are right here. And this part is nuts. Number of murders. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you because I don't want to go through every country. So I'll just tell you a number of homicides of Americans in the continent of Africa. One. In 2021, one homicide on an entire continent. I went through 54 countries. One of an American citizen homicide. I'm not talking about military and stuff like that because that's not homicide. So military people, they go in knowing, hey, that's different. But as far as tourists, one. Uh, they happen to be in Cape Verde and it happened to be someone who was from Cape Verde and they were going home to visit. I don't know the whole story. Maybe somebody wants to drop a comment, maybe the story or something like that. But it was in 2021. I think it was a young lady. She went to go visit her family in Cape Verde. And unfortunately, she didn't make it back to the United States. But for the most part, that doesn't happen. Now, in comparison, uh, for you folks that live here in the United States, last week alone, over the weekend, I'm reading an article um, from Chicago, in a news station in Chicago, and um, it was on November the 14th. Over the weekend in Chicago, remember I said there was one murder on the entire continent of an African-American. In Chicago, there were six over a weekend. And the story's gone, people shot in their throat, somebody was robbed, um, drive-by shooting. I mean, guy shot in his arm, actually says both arms, and he died at the hospital. Um, look, man, these are our brothers and sisters too. That's, that's the bad part. These aren't even police shootings. These just are our brothers and sisters. Um, something has come over us. We are, um, we are in a sick society and we, even though overall I say we're peaceful people, what has happened is, um, I think all, all this violence and all this, um, anger, whatever else it is that's going on is, um, spilling out into our communities. So therefore we're taking it out on each other. Um, uh, we don't have a leg to stand on when it comes to that, you know, absolutely. Um, there's been a lot of racism and we deal with that also. But um, one thing we don't want to do is our young brothers and sisters, especially our brothers. It doesn't even make sense to me that we would kill each other, you know, especially over, you know, robbing somebody and you're getting a hundred bucks if you're lucky. But anyway, um, it's safe. I mean, that's one of the main reasons why I said we should be going. It's safe. Okay. Just to give you an idea about passports and why we don't have passports. Um, this is just a, my analogy from research that I've done. And I've been paying attention to this over the years. And um, it's always been important to me that my children and my family have a passport. Um, we want to be able to get up and go. In the United States, again, they're only... only 40 percent, 35 to 40 percent, that is, of people even have a passport. So I know that number for African-Americans, from what I understand, is from somewhere around seven or eight percent of that 40 percent even have a passport. So those numbers are extremely small. So you're kind of stuck. You can't really go anywhere. Um, passports are important for a reason. Um, you need to go get your passport. When you see people running to go get their passports, you don't want to be last on the boat, guys, for that. Go get your passport. Brothers and sisters in America, go get your freaking passport. It doesn't make any sense. Um, I, I pulled some stats here because I want to know how many people were issued passports 
2022. Remember, we're not even at the end of 2022 yet. We're getting close. But so far, about 22 million passports were issued this year. 10 years ago, 13 million passports were issued. 20 years ago, 7 million passports were issued. This is the most passports ever been issued in U.S. history. Hmm. I mean, you 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 figure it out. Um, I don't know the exact reason, but I'm glad I have mine. And I encourage family members and friends of mine to make sure they get theirs too, because um, um, they're not just getting the passport for no reason. And again, it's not most of us getting the passport. So go get your passport. I know some of you folks don't know what it takes to get a passport. So I figured what I would do, and I'm gonna put the link down on the website um, because I want you to get a passport. Um, first of all, you can go on the US Department of State's website. And like I said, I'll put the link below so you can find out what all you need to get a passport. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot. The amount of money you're gonna spend um, to get a passport if you um, if you smoke weed, if you um, go to the club and you buy a bottle of Moet, um, if you go out to dinner and you like to go to one of the fancy restaurants and spend one hundred fifty two hundred dollars for a meal, let me just put it like this: you can get your passport. It doesn't take that long to get it, so you can get a passport for the amount of money you're spending just on something that you really don't need. And remember, a passport lasts for years, so it doesn't lose value like um, your clothes or that pair of shoes that you think you need more than you need to be able to travel. So if you're gonna do that, you know, try try and go get your passport. So instead of buying that pair of shoes that's gonna take you, you know, you don't wanna get no wrinkles in your Nikes or your Adidas. Uh, shout out to Kanye West. <laughs> and uh, you, you, you get the passport, spend, a, spend 150 bucks or whatever it is to get your passport. Like I said, I have the link below and you can get a passport. Um, another reason why um, I want to make sure that you guys get a passport is because I want you to see Africa. I want you to get the South Africa. I want you to get to Kenya. I want you to meet the people. I want you to meet your twin. I want you to meet your auntie. I want you to meet your mother. Yes, I want you to meet them. And you'll have an opportunity to meet them, folks, because I'm telling you, they're there. I got a grandmother in Africa already. It was just kind of by default, but and I'll take it. Can't wait to get back. So these are some of the reasons why, again, I advise you to get your passport. If you're an African-American, get your passport. Um, I know, make sure it's valid. If you already have a passport, that's another thing. Make sure it's valid at least six months before your travel. It's gotta be at least six months left on your passport to travel to a lot of these places. Give you an example. Um, when we were heading to Africa this year, um, my wife, oh my God, um, I don't know what it was. I just decided, I said, you know what, let me see y'all passports. Cause my son had just gotten a new passport, but my wife and I didn't look at ours. We knew our passports were likely valid. We weren't worried about it. But then I said, you know, I look at my passport. It was good. I said, yeah, babe, let me see your passport. Looked at her passport. I'm like, uh oh. And then I looked at some of the countries where you, how long your passport had to be valid. Again, uh-oh, turns out my wife's passport was going to expire, I think it was less than three months before travel. We got in a little situation. We were in Destin, Florida, where we are right now. I knew, You know, you guys normally hear me say sunny Florida, but um, it's been cloudy for like three, four days. Matter of fact, I think the temperature is about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. What's that, about eight degrees Celsius? It's pretty chilly here right now. But anyway, that's story for other days. Hopefully it'll get warm up in a couple of days or so. But we um, had to leave um, Florida and we had to set an appointment to get a passport. We had to either go to New Orleans, Louisiana, or we had to go to Atlanta, Georgia. We're okay with going to Atlanta. Family, friends there, we've been living there for years. But um, the problem was we had to go to Atlanta the same day we had to fly out. Fortunately, that office, if you were traveling and you had your tickets and all that kind of good stuff, that office was one of the only offices that would give you a passport in the same day. They gave us a passport the same day. They don't do that in every situation. It just depends. Now, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just telling you what we ended up having to do. 
We were fortunate enough, my wife had to get there really early, had to drop her off, had to find places to park in the heart of downtown Atlanta. But fortunately, the people in Atlanta came through and the customer service was good. It cost a little bit extra to get your passport same day, but it was just in time with really time to spare because our flight didn't leave to the evening. So we had our luggage and whatnot in our car, had my brother take us to the airport, left our car in Atlanta, and we were able to jump that flight with her brand new passport. So, hey, that worked out for us. Again, shout out to the Atlanta passport office. Uh, I'm not gonna get paid for this. You guys know it's not like they have any links for me to get paid, but I mean, they did what they did. So we gonna give Jack his jacket. So anyway, again, make sure if you already have a passport, make sure it's valid. If you have children, make sure they have a passport, especially people, because a lot of times you could be dealing with child custody issues and only one passport can be issued per child. Now there have been incidences where people would have children and then they don't get a passport for the child and the other parent may get a passport for the child. Maybe they're fudging or lying an application. Next thing you know, they can take your child out of the country. But if there's a passport on the child, now it, it's, it's registered and everyone knows what's going on. So your child can just disappear and leave the country and no one else can go get a passport for your child because only one passport will be issued for that child. So we wanna make sure that we protect ourselves and our family, especially those precious ones that can't do it for themselves. They need you to protect them because we know all situations don't work out perfect. So we wanna make sure our children are protected. So anyway, uh, I want you guys to make sure you don't forget to like, don't forget to comment on this video. Um, if you haven't seen any of our other videos, make sure you check and check some of these other videos because we got some videos that got real hot. I think one of them had about 12,000 views in about two or three days. Not bad for a brand new channel, but that's because we're giving content. We're talking about our people and what's going to be best for our people. Now, if anybody out there, you have any advice on what you can offer and tell us about passports and African people, people in South Africa, people in Kenya, let us know what you think about this whole thing about why African Americans don't have passports. You, you 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 tell me why you think some of us don't have passports and i'm gonna end it on this why i think some african americans don't have passports number one cost most passport holders make over fifty thousand dollars in the united states of america the average household income by the way, that's individuals, 50,000. They make over 50,000. Most household income for African-Americans in the United States is about 44,000. So that tells you that even individuals as household income, some of them don't make any money and they don't really see the value of take, or they don't see the, why could I take, how could I, how, why should I take this time out that is to go get a passport and go spend 200 bucks. And then if I got a family of four, it's going to cost me almost $1,000 to get passports. And I just don't have it. And I don't plan on going anywhere anyway. So I think financial might have a lot to do with it. And secondly, it might just be, um, you know, who you're surrounded by. Uh, I see in the Southern states, a lot of people don't have passports. You hear people in the Southern states always saying, oh, you know, I love it here. And this is where my family at and blah, blah, blah. And I don't really need to go anywhere. So that has a lot to do with it. Um, and then access to information uh, where we don't talk about traveling very much because most of the time our family members haven't done a lot of traveling. Um, and when we do travel, we tend to go to places that have high murder rates for American citizens. Um, for instance, Mexico, because, you know, black folks run into Mexico. I see all the groups and going to Mexico. But if you looked up how many people got murdered in Mexico, Americans, some of y'all might change your mind. I'm just, these, this is, these numbers are publicly available. So it's not me saying it. I'm telling you what the travel, the state department says. So, you know, it's cool. Go ahead and travel to Mexico. You know, just make sure you got some protection with you, you know, cause, um, I, I ain't doing it. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't mind my Mexican brothers and sisters, but, uh, that's not my first choice. I'm going where my people at and why not go someplace where it's safe? I'm doing that first. So, that's probably the main reason, financial. And secondly, we just don't know. We don't talk about travel very much, you know. So, hey guys, again, I want you to like, I want you to comment, make sure you subscribe and share this video. And again, this is Buckner Family Travels and we are on an adventure because we are heading to South Africa. 
And our plan is to make it there by 2023. So make sure you stick with us, follow our journey. Hey, I'm out guys. Peace.